You know, I think it was, I think, uh, during this period, your time as a tenure as Minister of Internal Security, when Operation Black Thunder, once more that great grim reminder of Sikh militants taking over Golden Temple, and I'm sure all of you must be thinking about Operation Blue Star at that time. What was, how was the decision making? What was the policy decision? How did you all decide what to do then? You see, after I took over as Minister of Internal Security, I worked very closely with the IB, particularly the then DIB, Mr. M. K. Narayan, and um, one or two others, uh, Ved Marwa, who had taken over as SPG chief. And uh, I had prepared, or caused to be prepared, a blueprint in the event that the Golden Temple was once again taken over by militants. It was a purely academic exercise. Uh, we wanted to be ready for any eventuality. The blueprint reached my table. It was on my table for several days when, as uh, luck or ill luck would have it, work, the police officer, was shot at one day in the Golden Temple. Yes, people tend to indulge in self-glorification about Operation Black Thunder, but the only players in Operation Black Thunder were the Prime Minister himself, Rajiv Gandhi. Ribeiro, as a policy advisor, Gill, M. K. Narayanan, and myself. Governor Siddharth Shankar Ray was consulted, but he was an observer. Bhuta Singh Ji, Home Minister, was certainly kept in the picture, but he had very few inputs. Gopi Arora was the key player in the PMO. So when this happened, MK Narayan and I took the decision that we will begin to implement the first phase of Operation Black Thunder. Parliament was in session, Rajiv was in the Parliament House. I went across to him and I had a couple of meetings, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, and I said, keep the Home Minister informed. I think I told the Home Minister around about 4 o'clock or 4.30, after I'd alerted the SPG. We flew out the SPG, and the immediate uh, goal was to take the two towers, to control the two towers. We thought, I didn't expect Operation Black Thunder to be gone through fully. I thought, we take the two towers and we'll see what happens. One thing led to the other, and uh, those were exciting days. Those seven, eight days were exciting. I remember one day when um, we went through, a, I, we flew to Amritsar, flew back to Delhi, started the meeting with the uh, Prime Minister at about uh, 9.30 or 10. Believe me, the meeting went right up to 6 a.m. in the morning. And again at 6 a.m., we just went back to the airport and flew out to Amritsar again. And um, we had various options. MK Narayan was giving the inputs. I was taking the policy decision. Then it would go back to this crisis management group and then it would be implemented. Uh, some options were ruled out, of course. But the main strategy which was accepted and was implemented successfully was that we will lay siege to the temple. No policeman. No policeman will enter the Golden Temple until they surrender. And we kept that for, I think, the seven, eight days when the siege was on. We picked out one by one the militants through sharpshooters. It's exciting times. That is how I think Operation Blue Star could have been avoided. I had studied Operation Blue Star, and therefore what we had done in Operation Black Thunder was a study in contrast. What is important is, after Operation Black Thunder, I prepared um, an after-operation report. It must be somewhere in the archives of the Home Ministry, where I had set out the lessons that we had learned from Operation Black Thunder, the points of success, and the mistakes we made. We made a few mistakes on Operation Black Thunder. I sincerely hope that in the event uh, a similar situation arises, people will read that report. In fact, I told Mr. Narsimha Rao, I was not in government at that time, that the Babri Masjid demolition could have been avoided if only somebody had cared to study the Operation Black Thunder after 
operation report and then fashioned of course a slightly different strategy to protect the mask but obviously uh, nobody uh, nobody gives any intellectual input into decision making decision making is instinctive or gut based upon what you think your political experience is but nobody's political experience believe me prepares him for either operation black thunder or uh, the babri masjid demolition one of the things that you did with operation black thunder which is probably the most you know different than any other thing was that you did it in the open press it was like as if the media was invited to yes. told watch can you talk about how you did that decision that again was a conscious decision in fact in the crisis management group the decision was that perhaps i should go before the camera every evening and explain to the nation what we are doing uh, that was the initial reaction but then we discussed it and i said no it would be wrong i said the best person to do it would be gil himself gil should go and speak to the people in english as well as hindi as well as punjabi and that's the only thing that will carry conviction in fact uh, in the after operation report one of the things that i recall we highlighted was that i believe was a major decision in fact a master stroke to put gill a jack seek um, impressive uh, personality before the camera every day was i think a very major decision apart from being in front of the camera you had the international media there too. i mean yes. it was almost as if you yes. were we allowed there. everyone to come in we allowed everyone to come in to watch what's happening we allowed people to look at the sharp shooters we allowed people to look at from our vantage tower position into the temple we allowed everybody to look at it and that broke the back of the militants what was it that you were trying to sort of achieve there or what was the lesson that you, that was coming out because many many ways you were also allowing some of your strategies to go out and see for the first time we exposed to the people of punjab that the militants were not motivated by very high ideals that the militants were in many cases just ordinary criminals that was exposed to the people of punjab secondly we exposed to the people of punjab that the golden temple was being defiled people were uh, you know answering calls of nature there and that kind of thing golden temple is being defiled i think this shocked the people of punjab and for the first time we i think uh, demystified or de uh, we, we we broke the mythology of uh, milit of militancy in punjab after that militancy was never the same there was a militant here was a militant there but in the minds of most people uh, militants were criminals and militants were doing acts of sacrilege the militancy died began to die after that and by about 92 93 militancy had been virtually wiped out in punjab 